Okay, we are live. Good evening. Um, I'd like to welcome everyone to our uh, second workshop for the Ontario uh, Great Park Phase 1. Um, my name is Rudy Zelda. I'm the Planning Director, and I also have with me today is Jamie Richardson, our Senior Landscape Planner. And I also have with us uh, tonight is our consultant team, SWA, and I'll have them introduce themselves once I turn over the presentation. But uh, we're, we're very excited of the progress that we've made um, uh, on the phase one here for the Great Park. As you may recall, in November of, of last year, um, we had our first workshop and uh, we presented some concepts uh, for, the, for the Great Park and then particularly phase one. And we've taken all the comments that we received as well as those comments that we got in the surveys and we've put together now kind of our draft final for phase one that we wanna present for you tonight. So I'd encourage everyone to um, participate and uh, ask questions, uh, comments. Um, uh, this meeting is for, um, for everyone to participate. We're very excited about, about the Great Park, especially this first phase one, that'll be the kind of the, the first, you know, center, centerpiece that we're putting in as, as, as part of the park that we're pretty excited about. And so with that, I will um, go ahead and turn it over to the SWA team. Thank you, Rudy. Uh, I'm Sean O'Malley with SWA, I'm a landscape architect, and with me, Lavisa Kerrigan, also with SWA. Um, and I'll just say a few words first, I think, about, you know, the importance of great parks in our American cities. And, you know, Ontario joins the ranks of, of, of uh, some fantastic uh, places here in the country that have established great parks for many different reasons. And, those great parks include um, New York, you know, cities like New, in New York, San Francisco, San Diego, Irvine, and now Ontario. Um, and I think that long history uh, has really become an American tradition uh, that's, uh, that Ontario can now take part in and embrace uh, and really make something special and unique that, that represents this great city. So with that, I'll turn it over to Lavisa and she can continue. Thank you, Sean. Yeah, let's, let's get into some Ontario specifics. This is um, the, the overall agenda for the evening. Thanks to you for everyone to um, jump on tonight. This is our, our second presentation. And to those who are joining us for the second time, welcome back. We're excited to show you some refined design ideas. Uh, for those of you who are joining tonight who may not have been able to participate last time, we're glad to have you uh, jump in with your questions and comments. And if you would like to review the material that was presented back in November that is accessible on the city website for you to download and, and get a little bit more background. So with that, let's start with an overview again of the Ontario Great Park in its entirety. It's a very expansive stretch of land that is set aside by the city for park development. At its completion, it will be a total of almost 350 acres span over 3.7 miles in length, which coincidentally is more than the New York Central Park that, that Sean just mentioned. Um, but of course, at this size and scale, this is a project that will take years and decades to complete, and that's gonna keep growing together with- Exactly, the and before you leave the slide, Lavisa, I wanna point out that, you know, just like here in Ontario, New York went through the same evolution. Uh, that New York Central Park was out on the hinterlands, the edges of the city when it was initially built. And it was a city that later grew around, you know, Frederick Law Olmsted's great park in New York City. So uh, <clears throat> we're going to do the same thing right here in Ontario. And in a similar way, we're located here with the great park in phase one in a rapidly growing and evolving part of the city, Ontario Ranch. Um, and of course, with a project of the scale that will be completed in, in phases, the challenge is to design a park that can be built to feel like one place, even though it happens over time and it, it stretches over a larger area of land. So with that, we, we want to emphasize the importance of having a design framework as a foundation for the park. And this is a reminder of some ideas that we went into in a little more detail last time and how there's a set of key drivers for the design of, of the overall master plan of the park and for phase one that we, we would like to see carry through. And the first is the importance of stormwater management 
And that is something that has been a really important factor in how we have designed the landform and thought about the, the function of the natural systems in the park and how they can create great experiences. And this is actually one of our parks out here in Irvine that we've designed, but we intend to really bring the same kind of approach uh, to this great park. And uh, we said use that stormwater element as kind of a thread throughout the entire park itself. Right. So a, a little throwback to uh, to the last workshop where we described this uh, this idea of a uh, dry creek and arroyo that would run like a ribbon through the center of the park. And that would be the low point of the topography. So we know it doesn't rain a lot, but when it does rain, this will help to collect the water and filter it. Um, and when it doesn't rain, it will be a, a dry feature of the park. Dry arroyo. Yeah. Another important element of the park framework is the trails, the way that you access the park, the way that you move through it, and the way that we can utilize a hierarchy of trails to create different experiences. So we have a wider primary trail that's an asphalt surface that you can run or bike on, um, and that would also facilitate fire access and other types of, of safety measures for the park. And then alongside that, there's a network of secondary trails that are maybe more intimate and have other materials like concrete or decomposed granite that takes you in loops throughout the park for different discoveries. And lastly, the landscape character is something that can really help unify the park character. And there's um, a couple of different typologies that we are working with primarily, one being a shaded forest that wraps around the edges of the park. Um, to obviously shelter shelter from the sun, but but also create an experience of entering through um, a canopy of, of tall trees. Can I tell a, little, tell a little story real quick about the shaded forest Go for it. and great parks? So probably the best example of the utilizing that shaded forest in a great park would be Golden Gate Park in San Francisco. Again, where Olmsted, who also did uh, Central Park in New York City, when he came out west on the train, you know, <laughs> thinking about it, how to establish this forest in what at the time was sand dunes. And then from that forest, then over the years, you carve away what you need, the meadows, uh, the museums and so forth that can come into this great park over time, you know, as the community grows around it and we can pay for it. So the first thing he did was establish that forest as a framework for Golden Gate Park. And that was a great lesson that we're gonna apply here to Ontario. Right. And so, yeah, together with, with the arroyo that starts to really define the backbone of the landscape experience. And from there, you carve out your meadows and your fields. And we also um, are planning to designate areas for some of the heritage agricultural landscape types, the productive landscape, the orchards, the windrows that protect the orchards um, and row crops to give an opportunity for people to, to engage with the productive history of land in Ontario. And so this framework really provides a structure for the park. It helps give it a unique character and it's a uh, basis for evolution in which you can add more programs over time as the park expands, the community grows around it. Um, and yeah, you have, you have different needs and you have different desires. And within this framework, you can accommodate that uh, while still maintaining a unified sense of what the great park of Ontario is. So taking these ideas and looking uh, again at a reminder of the phase one area, which is on the east side of the park, the site today very much marked by agricultural land uses. Um, it is in and of itself a, a rather large piece of land. This is 130 acres, roughly a full mile long. 130 acres. Yeah, it's it's definitely, um, it's not small, let's, let's put it like that. Uh, and it's, it's bordered on the west by Archibald Avenue, Haven Avenue on the east, Eucalyptus Avenue to the south. Um, and as, as a start and a reminder here, I wanna just pull up the uh, conceptual design plan that we showed uh, last time around. So here you see the different elements of the landscape framework laid out with the forests, around the edges, the arroyo as the ribbon coming through, the active fields and the meadows within the interior of the park. And then a lot of the programs centered here in the core with a community farm hub 
playground and an amphitheater. Um, and yeah, a lot of you, I, I think and hope, saw this plan and uh, joined us in discussion mm -hmm. and also filled out the uh, survey that was posted online, which, which was great. We're uh, very excited to see that there is so much interest in the community for this park um, and a lot of good ideas. So a snippet here. Of, of some of the many comments that came in. Um, a lot of you are looking forward to accessing the new trails, to have shaded places to go for picnics, recreation with family and friends, informal sports. Um, there was quite a few specific requests and recommendations that were made from straightforward things like dog facilities, uh, bottle filling stations, good trails to run on, and those kinds of ideas we have tried to consider and make part of the plan um, as much as possible. I'm, I'm sorry to say that the person who wanted scuba diving might be disappointed in the evolution, <laughs> but but as much as possible, we we have um, incorporated your your thoughts and ideas, and um, and also listened to the concerns and some of the concerns that were raised had to do with, um, with safety, um, for the right. park to feel safe, for the park right. not, to, not to be too noisy, not to be a disturbance in the neighborhood. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, and for lighting, that, that's also an important matter, both for, for lighting to be safe for park use um, after hours, if, yeah. if allowed and if appropriate, but at the same time, not wanting so much light that it becomes a, a light pollu pollution factor yeah. for the neighbors. And regarding safety, you know, we'll be sure and space the trees. We talked about a forest, but we'll space those trees so you can see through them. There'll be a transparent uh, visibility through and underneath the trees under the ground, you know, with a very low ground plane, no shrubs or anything to hot, you know, people, you know, so it's very open and easily, uh, you know, viewable from the edges. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and <clears throat> some of these, um, concerns and thoughts are very central objectives for the city to make sure that it's it's safe for residents to exactly. use and that the the management and, and maintenance is, is reasonable mm -hmm. so another element that was included in the survey was a request for ideas for a park name um, and this one was interesting there's there's a lot of answers and i didn't i didn't include duplicate answers here but quite a few people thought that the ontario great park is already a perfect name it needs nothing more um, and then there were others that pulled it in, in a couple of different directions. Um, some of them still related to the qualities of the region, like Pasture Park, Mountain View Park. Uh, we have Moo Park. That's on fine. There. Yeah. Like Moo Park. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and um, I'm sorry to say there's not going to be a big reveal of, of a name. I think this is a cliffhanger that the city will keep everyone in suspense a little bit, a little bit longer. Uh, I'm not sure it will be another round of uh, voting or competition or uh, how this will where do you will let you handle this one yeah <laughs> <laughs> but we re really appreciate the creativity out there yeah thanks uh, yeah and so one thing at least to to say for sure is that there is a lot of inspiration to be drawn from the history of ontario and so before we really dive into the sign i want to quickly remind us again about the different layers of the city that have influenced the park design from the native landscape, the agricultural land uses and the agrarian history mm -hmm. uh, in this urbanizing city today. And as you can see, of course, Euclid Avenue, uh, very one of the most beautiful streets in Southern California, really established by those tall trees, you know, the old silk oaks along Euclid. And what a vision that, uh, you know. Strong vision. Yeah. That they had early on. And they had a magnificent setting to work with. Uh, can't say anything but that with mm -hmm. the mountains still today providing such a prominent backdrop to the city. And then you have the, the creeks of water that come down the mountains that feed the basin below. Uh, and these mountains are visible actually from within the phase one site too. So this is something that we want to be sure to work with the design so that we can capture some of these views and speaking about the native heritage, also take the opportunity to design with California native plants and of course a climate appropriate yeah. palette for this work. is This is extremely important for us. You know, myself, I'm trained in California natives. It's my foundation in landscape architecture. 
at Cal Poly Pomona. And uh, as you know, uh, there's nothing more important than our, how we conserve our precious resources, our water resources, and celebrate the beauty of, the, of our native trees, the oaks, the sycamores, the alders, uh, you know, the, the California poppy you see here, the uh, Mullenbergia deer grass. Um, all these things are, are things that we will find here in the Great Park. And they'll, this native landscape can form the foundation of this park. And on top of that foundation, we can pull from the uh, agrarian legacy of the city that, of course, is found amongst the growers past and present. The orchards, the vineyards, the olive groves that really contributed to the prosperity of the city. Um, and it is found also in the ranchers, in Ontario Ranch, and what we have there today uh, with the current and, and past livestock industry still remnants present on our very site um, with these structures that tell a tale of, of uses of the right. past. And of course, in this growing city, as in any growing city, the social life, the cultural life really is glue that holds the city together. The ways that we meet up to celebrate big events or, or just to gather in the everyday. And I'm sure a lot of you, just like us, have, have felt that even more strongly through this pandemic and the ways that, that we have been forced to isolate. Uh, it really underscores the importance of, of having places where you can meet your loved ones or engage with your community. And we want to think about how to facilitate that in the Great Park at different scales. Mm -hmm. And as we start thinking more closely about design and design of different elements within the park, we can start to look at too how some of these layers of inspiration can be interpreted and, and articulated in the park. So I mean like materials? Like Yeah, now we're getting very specific. We're, <laughs> we're zooming in, we're going to zoom out and we're going to look at the plan. But I, I want to share some of these ideas because this is really integral to our design thinking. And I think it, it helps to anchor uh, the vision that that we are about to, to present. Uh, and there's a connection between yeah. the landscape um, and, and the features in the park. Right, like the arroyo here you see coming out of the, the mountains. The mountains. Right, and the, the very rock and the, the cobbles of the creeks in the mountains. That is something that, as an idea, we can grab a hold of <clears throat> and build something like a gabion wall, a low wall, or a facade feature like you see on the right here. Mm -hmm. And then... Um, make it something your own, you know, really take that and, and stylize it and make it something that's Ontario that defines yeah. this great park. Yeah. Right, okay. and that pulls that inspiration from different places. Yeah. So, so thinking about wood materials, the, the old trees, the packing houses, the crates for fruit that were integral part of the industry, um, there's form cues in that too that we can pull for wood features, whether it's slat walls or, or monumentation that happens in the park. Mm -hmm. Thinking about metal as a material, we of course have the, the ranch structures with the corrugated roofs. They're a little rusted now. Maybe some people find that beautiful and fascinating. Some people maybe maybe less so, but there's definitely ideas there that can be refined and, and stylized and brought back, uh, whether it's the use of corrugated roofs or facade pieces or uh, weathered steel as a material in the Tall park. posts that support those of structures and things like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then lastly, of course, everything needs a pop-up color. And, and whether that is looking at old um, crepe labels, uh, brand labels, or it's, it's looking at the flowers and the fruit itself, there's ideas there for a pop of color that could be an accent in the park. Yeah, integrated into signage, lighting, and even structures themselves. Yeah, okay. Everything needs a little pop. So, so this is the refined conceptual site plan that we have right now. Uh, maybe at a glance, it may not look all that different from what we, what we presented before. The framework uh, largely has been established and it's been something that we worked with all along. So you still have the, the forest element around the edges, the arroyo as, as a ribbon through the center, the fields carved out of that, your, your orchards and your windrows as exclamation marks in the landscape. Um, we have four parking lots, one on each perimeter side and then two in the center. The primary trail that comes through the heart of the park extends the full length of it. 
-hmm. And then smaller trails that branch off of that and, and take you elsewhere in the park and to other entry points throughout. And you kind of see the orchards that are here and there. Right. I'll help call some of the agricultural heritage. What we have added is a dog park up in this corner for all the puppy parents out there. We've learned that there's, there's quite a few. Um, and we have refined the, uh, the design ideas for the overall, um, the overall landscape and for the amenities that are proposed throughout the park. So looking again at the, the park core, which has most of the concentrated um, envisioned activity. So this is like right in the middle. This is right in the middle. Yeah, I right right there. there. We're, we're right okay. smack in the middle. So you have uh, parking lots that give you easy access on either side. Um, and this is just to give an overview of some of the relationships of the, the farm hub here, the, um, the central green, the children's playground area, and how that relates over to uh, a park plaza with picnic spaces across the bridge that takes you to the other side of the Arroyo where the amphitheater really is an anchor point in the design. And that amphitheater is kind of built, you know, built into a, a berm that we created there. So it's all kind of sloping towards that red building which is the stage. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be an incredible place to see a concert or something. And you can see the mountains then um, look the on mountains the other distance, side, yeah. to the north of that. So we, we are gonna look closer at, um, at a lot of these features. Just wanted to share this as an overview. And I wanna actually um, step, step back a little bit and start at the very perimeter of the park and ask the question, what does it mean to enter the Ontario Great Park? What does it feel like? Is there a marker? Is there something that, that defines the edge? And what we wanna propose for that on the corners of the park at some of the main uh, pedestrian entry points is a trellis structure that becomes a gateway into the park. Mm -hmm. So here you, you start to see how we can take some of the cues from the existing structures on the side. From the, from the dairy farms that used to be here, the, the tall slender posts, the very simple corrugated metal overhead features, uh, you know, so forth. And then the color that you, that you talked about, we can kind of bring in to that architecture. Right, so you, you, you take something that's a relatively simple structure, but it has an iconic form, and you add a layer to that that gives it a little more of a playful pop um, and becomes more iconic through that. Hmm. And then flanking that, uh, there can be monumentation that picks up a little bit on this wood slatted idea. Mm -hmm. Again, with, with a very simple hint of color, painting perhaps the insides of wood posts and at key entry locations, lighting this from the inside. So you get a lantern effect at night and you add lettering on top of that to whatever the yeah. park name ends up being. We could use like the California native deer grass, for example, is, you know, there's a lot of different things we can use out here for ground yeah. cover, that's one idea. That's a really, really uh, tough grass that can survive the heat and so forth. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And so you come through and then once, once you're inside of the park, you let the trails take you along. So there are different places to go and, and different experiences along the trails. A few examples here would be a, a smaller secondary trail that goes um, along the edge of an open turf field with a forest on the other side. You can see a little bit of that character kind of in through the trees. Slight mounding up mm -hmm. and then keeping it clear and open beneath the trees for visibility through, yeah. And here's um, a vision of the primary trail. This is smack in the, the heart of the action. So you have the park plaza on the, on the left-hand side here. We'll see some other uh, images of that approaching the bridge over to the, the Arroyo section. So this is where a lot of things are, are going to happen. So there's like a running track along that flanks the asphalt uh, main uh, trail here uh, to jog along, right? Right, and that's, that's something to clarify. Maybe the, the main trail is a 12 foot wide asphalt trail, but along the majority of it through the park, uh, there will be um, a DG edge on both sides. And that's to widen the trail and make it wide enough for fire trucks to drive on it if they need mm -hmm. to. Right. I also see some, uh, looks like food trucks in the distance. Is that- We'll, is that we'll, we'll get to those. Oh, okay, great. I think Talk someone's about getting that. hungry. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the, but yes, yes, there's, there's places to go. Let's, great. let's, let's say that. Yeah. Um, and whether, whether it's from a food truck or you bring your own picnic, 
if you get tired, you want to rest for a bit, you can find a picnic pavilion to do so. And this will be a uh, solid roof structure to protect you from the sun with picnic tables and barbecues at your disposal. So here's uh, an idea of what that could look like. So using a similar form language as the entry trellis, but it's a little bit of a different design with a slanted roof. But you can start to see here how, how there's a, uh, a common language to some of these amenities. They kind of become a family yeah. that, that speak to some of the historic inspiration, but become unique to the park today. Absolutely. Only, you can only find here in the Ontario Great Park. Maybe you want to take a stroll along the Arroyo. There's uh, trails for, for the majority of the Arroyo that run on both sides, sometimes the primary trail on one side, but then you have an Arroyo trail that's a, a more intimate decomposed granite trail on the so opposite softer side. Softer surface. Yeah. Softer surface, mm -hmm. ties in more with the characters. So you can walk here under the sycamores or the poplar trees. All and natives run to the Arroyo. Yeah. yeah. Places to, uh, to stop on a bench, and then uh, culvert crossings or bridges that, that take you across. So you can step out here and, and get a little bit of a different vantage point too of this braided sand and uh, cobble channel, the vegetated islands in the middle. Um, and in two locations along the Arroyo, like we're seeing an image right here, and then on the opposite side, we are proposing these outlook decks too. That would be a different opportunity to almost step into the Arroyo a little bit. Um, and that would have a shade structure as well. Like a little cantilever deck that's sticking out there. Right, comes comes into it a little bit. Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll see. Let's, <clears throat> let's scroll down and we'll we'll see some ideas. Here's mm -hmm. here's an idea for um, a culvert crossing mm -hmm. uh, bridge structure, <clears throat> and then this would be the the outlook deck. So there's a wood surface and um, and a guardrail, and this kind of invites you to to come out to the the peak here. Um, and look from almost within the Arroyo and then take a seat or read some of the signage that explains to you what it is you're looking at and, and why it is significant. So this could be anything from talking about the, the native landscape to talking about um, stormwater treatment and, and functions of the Arroyo in the landscape. Yeah. From there, okay, now we're gonna, we're gonna shuffle a little bit. If you <clears throat> come into the park from the north, the market alley would be your point of entry. And this is a, a flexible space with a lot of good opportunities to it too. It's this wide band uh, or walkway that so you I'm see here. A promenade there. Promenade is a good palms. word. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a little more grand in the sense that it's flanked with these palm trees and, and olives. But you might see in the old, you know, uh, ranchos with the olives that, uh, and the palms that frame kind of the main entry to the to the rancho building itself. Right, yeah. and becomes a landmark that you see from a bit of a distance too, which mm -hmm. could also be helpful. And then between the trees, <clears throat> there's a, a wide enough space that you could stage a farmers market or similar types of markets or events that can bring people in here on a regular basis and and be a nice program addition to uh, a regular rotation. And really an effort to make this a shady, comfortable place to be. There's nothing more important than that, I think, providing the shade cover. Right. Yeah. And the, um, the market alley sits right adjacent the farm hub, which I guess you could call us uh, the heart of the park in a lot of ways. This space, um, cluster of buildings, a little, almost like a, a mini village, in the center of it would have a community barn. That's a space that the city could use for programming, or yeah. that could possibly be used to uh, to rent out for personal. So it's like a big open floor, very high ceilings, doors that roll back that open up, you know, to the outdoor uh, gravel areas. You know, for right? Picnic entertainment and picnic tables in front, generous doors. We'll we'll see <clears throat> some some renderings of this too. Okay. And, and then this has a relationship to um, to a community farm area here with uh, raised planter beds, a little uh, tool shed, and then these fields that could be for pumpkin patches or to grow similar types of produce that would lend itself well to harvest events. So that community uh, farm is a place where like a family could grow their own vegetables and be kind of take part in the uh, in this in this farm hub, right? Yeah, that, that is to, to be explored, I think, a little bit closer exactly how the operation of this would be. If it's, um, if it's a uh, setup where 
you become almost a, a member, a, a part of it, and mm -hmm. you come and help out and have your own patch. Yeah. Um, or if there are other programs where there is a, a, a farmer that runs it mm -hmm. that, that has uh, interactive opportunities. And the, the bigger fields, like the pumpkin patch, things like that are for the festivals, kind of the seasonal right. things that are happening, seasonal crops right. that you grow. Yeah. That could change throughout the year. Exactly. Yeah, okay. you, you, can, you can grow spring flowers, so you can grow pumpkins for the Sunflowers? Flowers. Sunflowers, you know. That would be beautiful. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. And then there's um, another set of buildings here that would be mostly dedicated for the, uh, the operation of these areas, the orchards and the farm. But there's um, a point on the building here that I, I think would be really neat to have activated and, and have that interface uh, be active with the uh, the rest of the heart of the park here. And I see the, the play area. Go back. To, yeah, that's yeah. Good. yeah, that's kind of interesting. They're like orange slices. What is that? Well, we'll uh, <laughs> <laughs> we're getting ahead of ourselves. I'm, we'll, make, I'm hungry, I guess. So yeah, like. it sounds like <laughs> um, But yeah, no, and, it, and it's, it's good to bring that up too, because a lot of this is about the relationships between different active zones too, and, and how there can be a synergy between different uses. So if you're a family that um, is picnicking here, it's not you know too far to let your kids run out on the lawn, or if they're a little bit older, maybe they can go play and they're still not that far away. So mm -hmm. we're gonna kind of move through and see how some of these areas re relate to one another. Okay. And so for the, the farm up here area, this is um, an idea of, of what this could become, where you see um, the different uh, farming zones. Like the community boxes we just talked about to the left there, right? Yes. Okay. Yes, yeah, so this is kind of the back house a little bit with maybe rain barrels or um, other elements that tie into the, the overall function. Maintenance, you know, tractors, that kind of stuff is back in there. Yeah, that would be that would be kind of like over here. Okay. Um, and then on the front, so we're here we're looking at this front piece of the building. You could have something like a farm stand that if there's uh, enough produce being being made on site or oranges, if that's what ends up being grown in the orchards that could um, perhaps be sold here or use this for some other activity that that is um, engaging for for visitors mm -hmm. so from there yeah let's talk about the playground because this is something i think has a lot of really fun potential um, and of course a lot of inspiration to pull from here too from the the city's history uh, we zoned in more on the the idea of the, the citrus growers as a starting point for this design that is um, it, it kind of has a series of structures for play for different age groups uh, with seating around it and uh, some of these picnic pavilions close close by too so so you can, can like hang out under the under, like there's picnic tables right there under that pavilion and then watch the kids play kind of surrounding okay under the shade of the trees right yeah. And okay. there's additional seating and picnic happening over here. Um, so if we if we come down on the ground, and so we're looking at this from from the north here, yeah. this is an idea of what the character and the, the form that this can start to take, where you have a port in place rubber surfacing with a pattern that starts to climb up on some of these mounded structures, and you integrate play features with yeah. that. Maybe there's even more artistic treatments that become part of it too. Like this here is, is an idea of a uh, ribbon peel, oops, wrong way, ribbon peel that uh, meanders through the playground mm -hmm. and, and starts to engage different features. The rubber surfing is that like spongy stuff that you see now. Yeah, you can fall over and- Yeah, and uh, different yeah. kinds of play parks you see around. It's a very safe thing, material to use. It's safe and, it, and it's more easy to maintain too. You can, yeah. you can clean it easier and so on. Okay. So yeah, kind of taking one more step back here uh, we're, we're seeing some structures for older kids, um, obviously very inspired by the, the citrus crate as a starting point. And this is something that you could outfit with climbing nets, have slides come down the, the other side here a little bit out of you. Mm -hmm. And opportunities for other more custom pieces that incorporate climbing netting uh, too and, uh, and become an extension of the ground plane. So there's this three-dimensional quality that that uh, place with what's happening in the pattern. And this will evolve more as we move through this. Obviously. Yeah, this is yeah. this is an initial concept, and there's definitely good uh, playground design experts out there that mm -hmm. that can help uh, make this a reality. Yeah. 
And so from there, we are moving on to the park plaza that sits, sits just adjacent. And this is an area that we have redesigned a little bit from, from what we showed last time. And uh, I think a big part of that was wanting to bring in time more, more shade. So this is envisioned now as a sycamore grove. Um, in, in that sense, related to the character of the arroyo with the, the sycamore trees kind of jumping up here um, in a more organized grid with picnic spaces beneath. Space for an information kiosk, which would have a small park office. So you can come and kind of get oriented in the park and learn about what's happening. Um, you have space here for your food trucks. So whether that is on a random weekend or associated with some major event in the amphitheater, there's opportunities and, and hookups for food truck to, to stand here and yeah. You can Electrical get, hookups basically. Right, right. exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so and, after you after you buy your your hot dog or your burger or or something maybe even more unique than that you can wander through uh, here I should point out we're we're kind of standing like right here mm -hmm. there's a low gabion wall on the corner kind of holding the edge of the space here mm -hmm. um, so you so cross the one on the other side you cross that the royal bridge which is very wide accommodates lots of people you know for for a big event uh, into the amphitheater. Right, okay. so that the connection is there. Um, we'll, we'll take one little lap through this, this plaza first. And um, in this plaza, we are imagining that there would both be kind of flexible picnic seating for smaller groups. Mm -hmm. um, but it would be super fun to incorporate a nod back to some of the, the specific cultural events of the, of the city's past, which in this case is the mile long picnic table. They used to happen down the center of Euclid Avenue, like literally in the median of the street. Uh, I wish I could have been there at the time, but th mm. this is something that um, that I think would be really appropriate to incorporate uh, for mm. this park and for this kind of space too, where during events at the amphitheater or if there are other larger events that the city wants to, to host here, you can see a lot of people uh, and you can meet meet a lot of neighbors. You know, you can even have like a little uh, photograph, uh, an etching of a photograph of that mile long table adjacent to this. So people can learn about that history you could. as they, you know, as they're sitting down, maybe nearby. So it'd be kind of interesting to. Yeah, it would be nice to have, to have some sort of homage to, <clears throat> to the past uh, yeah, just, in that sense. Right. Yeah. And there's a little, little more sort of articulation like that, that could be added. Um, maybe this building wants a color pop too, now that we've, we've talked so much about that, but this is the, um, an idea for the, the information kiosk. So it would have a counter where you can come up and, and uh, talk to a designated person that is uh, telling you what's happening in the park, may be able to possibly rent you some equipment if that becomes part of the, the programming. Um, yeah, and tell you what the best food is to get at the, at the trucks. And once you figured all of that out and uh, it starts to get a little bit later in the day, that's when you mostly over the bridge towards the theater uh, and yeah shifting our view a little bit here uh, we see this this really quite generous connection that Sean was describing it's, it's a wider bridge um, and as you land in this entry space here you have one very important large restroom mm -hmm. which we know a large event uh, will need and then th there's a couple different things to to address with with this area because there's a couple different things that kind of lock into one another. One is obviously the theater itself, the, the stage, the overhead, and then this bowl with uh, lawn terraces and concrete edges that, that you can sit on or just put a, a blanket up here in this slope portion of the lawn. Mm -hmm. The walks that come down to the, the parking lot and the trail. Um, and then the back of house um, in part would have you know, your standard storage space or green room for uh, performers, but there would also be space back here for a classroom operation that the, the city would control. So you could have an educational program yeah. happen in this in the structure too. And that would connect to this um, education garden that we're showing here just at the foot of the bridge. Mm -hmm. So this education garden would always would always be open. Um, and here you can really showcase your, your native plant palette and have 
um, educational yeah. signage related to that, perhaps. There's great examples of these these uh, lawn bowls all around Southern California. Of course, the Hollywood Bowl. Yeah. Uh, the lawn in the back there is a much look bigger example. Then you've got the Redlands Bowl in downtown Redlands, which is I remember as a child going there to see Pinocchio, and that was a great memory, you know. So why not here in Ontario, the Ontario Bowl, right? It's a place to make memories, yeah. and and as a, just as a comment to that, we know that. The city has a uh, an amphitheater and a lawn space at the town center, which is proving to be a, a little bit almost too small for the largest events that you yeah. want to put on. Right. So, so this is a little more generous of an iteration where hopefully everyone can find a seat. And here is, is an image of what that entry could look like. So the building here in the background has a bit of a butterfly structure to the roof. Still relatively simple in terms of the construction. We're, we're trying to um, stay within the, the Dairylands pavilion kind of idea. Right. Yeah. And have a, a lot of impact with pretty simple means, uh, slanted roof, these posts, mm -hmm. and then picking up some of the cues from the, the character of the Arroyo. And, and here you see an example of the Gabion walls. Beautiful stone. We, we see yeah. Gabion walls basically just stone within these wire baskets, right? Right. Stone, stone filled baskets that could exist as a feature wall at the entry. It's still an open question, by the way, what this ends up being called to its opportunities. For That's just a placeholder. There too. Yeah. Your name could be there if you donate. <laughs> you <could. laughs> it yeah. very well could. Yeah. And as you come inside, uh, you can climb up the stairs here and, and find your space um, along the terrace seating, good view of, of the stage, uh, protective overhead that helps frame the, the visual of what's happening on stage. And then on either side of that, you have slight, slightly lower, still still not small, um, Gabion walls that, that define the central space. And behind that is the Arroyo. So uh, I didn't, I guess not really part of this rendering, but the mountains are behind there as well. We should, mm -hmm. should put them in. Yeah. Um, yeah, cool. so this is your evening experience. And uh, in some ways, we should maybe have, have kind of ended with the bang that is the, um, the amphitheater. But I, I almost want to say that the restrooms, in some instances, is more important. Because when you really need it, you really need it. Yeah. And, and there's an opportunity here, too, to do something that is unique um, and a feature for the park. Mm -hmm. So right now, we are um, showing three permanent restrooms, two smaller ones, one in this view here and one on the other side that sit um, adjacent the parking lots and then the larger one at the uh, amphitheater like like we just mentioned. Um, and this is an opportunity to maybe work with a pretty straightforward template functionally of, of mm -hmm. you know, a dual restroom with um, a, a water fountain, but we can customize this and create something that goes hand in hand. Let's make it our own. Yeah. Right. With some of the other amenity features of the park, like an art uh, mosaic tile wall there that could be really beautiful. Right. So this is an this is a, a conceptual custom design for for the park. Something that would be yeah unique for the great park, and that pop of color could could travel to uh, to some accent doors perhaps. Mm -hmm. And this is an opportunity too to think about orientation in the park. We know phase one is already large. Uh, subsequent phases it's going to be a, a really long stretch of park. You can either choose a color scheme that stays consistent, or perhaps you use different colors to identify different areas or zones within the park. So it can help with wayfinding and help you to know, know where you are. Mm -hmm. So from there, um, really just want to zoom out one more time and, and look at the overall plan. Um, We've given you a, a little bit more of a ground level view, I hope, of, of what the vision is and, and what this place and time can become. And I think we just need to remind ourselves that at this stage where we're all excited about ideas that patience is still uh, a factor in the design. <laughs> the park will grow. Um, a tree, a tree takes, takes time to grow. So part of the strategy is to you know, plant as much as possible and, and actually plant a lot of trees rather small because sometimes they even grow they, they grow they grow faster, yeah, when the roots are established, they're stronger in that, in that regard. And so the bigger shade trees are along the trails. So, so day one, you have, some, you have some shade. It's really key seating areas and so forth. Yeah. Right, and like at the end trees. So there, there's some yeah. feature areas where you get a little more um, height day one. 
and then you give it a couple years and everything starts starts taking off and there's an idea of succession to that too where certain kinds of trees are more fast growing and, and yeah. they're going to take off and other trees are more long-lived yeah in time they will take over yeah the oaks are those long-lived live trees which are i think they should be the foundational tree for this park as well as the sycamores down the arroyo um, and we have to give those oaks some time so we'll have to have, pair those with some faster growing trees in the forest that uh, allow that succession to happen like right. i said yeah so yeah that is it's a little bit of a final reminder um and and with that i'll turn it over to to jamie to address the the next steps in this process and then we'll we'll open for questions Hello, everybody. Um, so yeah, thank you, uh, Sean and Lavisa. That was that was wonderful. I've been kind of uh, Philip and I have been answering some of the questions on the the chat box. So um, a lot of them were about uh, kind of the next steps. So uh, what we're anticipating is that by the end of summer 2021, this summer, um, we'll be moving forward and taking the conceptual uh, Great Park Master Plan as well as the preliminary plan for phase one to um, City Council and Planning Commission for final approval. Uh, by the end of this year, we're anticipating that um, the preliminary plans will go out uh, for, for bid on the construction of phase one, and we're anticipating to begin uh, construction early uh, 2022. Uh, throughout that process uh, for, for the approvals. Um, the public hearings will be noted in the newspaper. So if you uh, want to be notified through email or phone, just go ahead and send me an email and I'll keep track of everybody's names um, and, and get that information out to you uh, so, you're, so you're made aware of. Um, and with that, I think that we can open it up. There was a couple that I didn't get to. So there was a comment in the, in the question and answer about coffee shops. Um, so I will take note of that. It, that would be, that's one of the things that we're hoping will happen and that we're anticipating. So absolutely. Um, yeah. yeah, that's a great idea. Um, and will this park be staffed by city employees similar um, I think I've answered kind of in the chat box just a general overview. We've been working closely with our city um, internal team and our, our agencies. So we're working with our the operations, the safety, the maintenance, um, and programming, community life and culture. So those are all being determined. But I would guess that it's kind of, you know, we're, we're going to have to. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So with yeah. that, um, we can open it up to some some questions. I don't know, Rudy. Is this? Can people like raise their hands? And yeah, we, we can... have we have a few people. Oh, I see. Hands. You have one right there. I think I have is uh, Irene Chisholm. Uh, yes. So we can just. Can you unmute her? Yes, I did. She's on. Hi, Irene. Hi, Irene. How are you doing? Good. Good. Thank you. Uh, I'm. I'm. Oh, feedback. You either got to turn down your computer or your phone, which, there you go. Okay, but let's see if I can get rid of one. Okay, is that better? Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. A little bit. Uh, um, I think Jamie answered my question. Uh, I don't think this is going to work. Um, I, I just, uh, I am impressed. I saw the first uh, time they presented, and I'm still impressed. Um, so uh, I, I, I can't wait to see the trees. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're uh, I agree. <laughs> Actually, you. you know, we're very excited about the trees, and, and you know, um, one of the interesting and uh, things about it is, that's kind of one of the things we want day one is to really have those trees, especially on the periphery, uh, get them get them uh, planted early so that we can get that forest um, to, to go quickly. Established, and yeah. Established. And what's interesting is, you know, and um, SWA will tell you, you know, we, we drove around Ontario, Creekside, uh, our older parts of Ontario where you see our mature trees. And so we, you know, we have, we have a history of having these, you know, beautiful areas of beautiful trees. So, um, you know, this park will, 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 provide that even that that greater like um forest area that uh 
you know, that I think will provide this kind of calming and, and uh, place where you can kind of, an, kind of an oasis within the exactly, city. Exactly. Yeah. 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 I, I'm glad you got to come to Creekside. Yes. That's 30 years of growth. No, 34 or 35 years. Correct. Yeah. And even, you know, the, even, I mean, if you look at it today, it, it it's, you know, it's, it's, it looks great. And, you know, the trails, and and uh, and you know the trees, the, the context of it is beautiful. And I think that mm -hmm. if you know if you do it the right way, and you and you replace trees as you know as as you go every year, rather than waiting until all the trees are, are bad and then replacing them, you do a few at a year, and then that canopy stays the same. You know, and you can't really mm -hmm. notice when you replace a tree or not. And I think Creekside's done a good job of that, and uh, it's one of our you know our, our best communities when it comes to to you know trees, landscaping, and, and then walkability. And so. It's a great community. Yeah, I, I like how you mentioned o Oasis, because that's what I thought of when coming back from Orange County. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Yeah. You know, I'm always amazed at how big the trees get when you've got good deep soils like you have. You know, you look down to older parts of Ontario, this neighborhood, it's amazing how big and beautiful those trees are that really are the anchor for the community. Yeah. The only suggestion I have is to... Um, put in some oaks, um, landmark oaks in different places. Absolutely, yeah, definitely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great ideas. Thank you, Irene. Um, so we have a couple more questions in the the chat, and one of them is: Will there be a splash pad? Uh, so, uh, right now, the day one amenities, uh, we're, not sh we're not showing that, but that does not mean that in the future, um, this park can't allow for uh, various types of uses, one being a splash pad. I think that we had, Lavisa Wright, we had a couple comments on our last survey about um, splash pads and various things. So, that's what's great about this park and the design and the flexibility of what it offers is as you know those, those things come about and the and the community you know lets us know those are things that can be considered and, and most definitely worked into this framework mm -hmm. yeah um, i think so, it would be fun yes splash parks are, are one of my favorite things um will this presentation be available to anyone who wasn't able to join the yes this will be um available online um probably uh maybe not by the end of the week because i don't know how long it's going to take to convert but um and then get it uploaded to the website but definitely um with you can it have it up by next week by next week yeah so it will be available um and is this why everyone is trying to buy my house <laughs> uh, <laughs> that, <laughs> well that's maybe, a very very maybe. good problem to be in so yeah. um, well, there's a yeah. Most likely, it's it's a very huge amenity to to the city of Ontario, <laughs> um, to to have something uh, like this park. It's it yeah. is really a great opportunity, and Ontario yeah. is fortunate to have yeah. the land and to have SWA work on it. is is, is yeah. a pretty amazing thing. So. And you look around the United States; it's very nice. I, I mentioned most. Of, there's probably a couple more cities that have great parks I may have forgotten, but. That's basically it. You you are in great company. You will be in great company. Yeah, and I actually I'll, I'll add to that. I think you know that's a, it's kind of a, it's kind of funny, but at the same time it's a great question because, you know, it's a tribute to you know um, when we design those communities in Ontario, you know they're, they're a little bit different than most communities because we're providing you know trails and parks and amenities. And all, all these communities have, you know, neighborhood edges that'll get you to this park. There'll, there'll be SCE corridors that'll get you to this park. So um, while the park is a big amenity, the neighborhoods that you're buying into or that you live in are very, are, are, are unique in, in when you look at other surrounding cities. Uh, and so um, right now, um, Ontario Ranch is, is the top, uh, uh, it's the top uh, selling master plan community in the region. And it's, it's, I think, top three in the nation now. So and that's because people, there's a lifestyle there. There's, you know, and, and we, we need to keep those standards up and we need to keep in, in continue to add that value. And this park is just, you know, it's, it's part of that. So, um, you know, it's exciting. It's exciting. Um, so. Mm -hmm. So Rudy, it looks like we have a couple other people yeah. um, with the, with their hands okay. up. I will let uh, 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 Stan. Yeah, Stan Lamel. 
we live directly south of the park on the south side of eucalyptus our backyard will be facing is facing eucalyptus and uh, so we're gonna be really close and we're looking forward to it because it looks very it looks great and um, and i'm a runner so i like the trail there you go. exactly <laughs> and so great. looking forward to that so a couple laps around the park and some miles of <laughs> to do with someone wrote in a question about will there be ballparks and i'm wondering what you guys is what your vision is for how um like soccer fields and baseball fields might um conflict with um kind of this rural pastoral setting that um that you're picturing for us exactly yeah rudy you want to comment yeah, on that yeah, yeah baseball are fine but uh, there's a lot of them in other places <laughs> yeah i think one of the things originally when when we first started the green park actually many years ago you know the the emphasis is always like you know where where can we put as many active places as we can the mindset today is you know um let's build let's build a park where we have the flexibility so as as time as we grow if there's areas where we need passive areas where we need active areas this park will offer those opportunities. Um, this first phase, though, you do see those two uh, big grass areas and meadows. Those in the future can be converted to either soccer fields or um, or baseball fields. But it's gonna it's gonna depend on on the city's um, need at that time. Um, again, mm -hmm. you you know we have this park is you know 340 acres, um, and um, and then phase two of the park, which is just uh, to the west of Archibald, which um, the the Lewis development will be. We'll be doing that part of it in in the next um, probably yeah. eight or nine months, designing it. Um, that's also going to be another passive park area there, but it's going to base be based on needs um, and it's, you know working with our uh, community life and culture or parks and rec commission and figuring out where those needs are. But the neat part about it is is that is that we can we're designing this park so that if if a ball field is needed, you know, let's say today we can put it in, and then if it's not needed, we can take it out and put something else in. Yeah, we've sized those accordingly, yeah, to exactly, exactly. To be flexible. Right now, they're just lawns that, you know, a good, good place for kids to have soccer practice, that kind of thing, you know. More but, informal. Uh, yeah, yeah, more, more informal yeah. at this point. And, and very specifically for, for phase one, too, and uh, Rudy, correct me if I'm misspeaking, but I believe the high school that yes. in the future will be built on just to the north uh, along Grand Park Street, the, there's a chance that there might be sports facilities associated with that yeah. Yeah. that will you know they're going to go there before they were were mm -hmm. placed in the park yeah but i think one of the one of the really neat things is um, especially working with swa is you know we we've, we've taken some field trips to other larger parks where there's they are active fields and there's even parking lots and when you drive in those parking lots they're not your typical parking lot where you go in and it's you know it's just all concrete whatever you know it's, it kind of blends with the park same with the ball fields you know, the, the way that topography is done, the way that the trails are staggered and the way the hierarchy of the trails, all that plays a big part into kind of creating spaces and yet still at the same time having these active fields and have that separation where you yeah. can kind of enjoy the park and not be bombarded with lights and ball fields or, or ugly parking lots. And I think that's kind of one of the lessons that, that I know that I did as, as a planner that I learned in the last year and going to these parks and, and seeing how it's, how you can do it the right way. Um, and I think is going to be, and I think is the key to this and how we do it and how we design it. So, so um, you know, I'm, I'm kind of excited, but I think that again, as we go forward with the park, we will be, you know, we will be uh, looking at active areas. We'll be looking at also cultural, you know, we're looking at, you know, uh, libraries. We may be even looking at um, other facilities, amphitheaters, or, um, or, or even we talked about small botanical gardens and those kind of things. So, uh, there, there, you know, there is a, a lot of opportunities in, in this park. Yeah. So right now we want to plant that framework and then from yeah. there we can fall in. Yeah. Thank you for your uh, responses. I really appreciate that. And so you got the idea of what I was talking about. So Rudy's yeah. response about um, not letting lose the um, kind of the, the feel of it. Yep, exactly. Yeah. Well, that's great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, then we have, uh, let's see. Uh, Renia, I think. Let's see if I can. Yes. Hi. Oh, hi. Rudy. How are you doing? Good. How are you? Good. Good. Thank you. Um, so you kind of answered my question, you know, in the presentation and what we've always heard is it's, it's really going to take decades to build out, but it, things are moving really, really fast in Ontario Ranch. I mean, it seems like there's a new development every other day or, you yeah. know, five houses pop up all of a sudden. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and so... 
Uh, you know, I, we haven't even started phase one, and I'm, I'm super excited just at the prospect. But phase two seems like it's it's going to be here, you know, in the next year or so. Are we really looking at decades out, or as Ontario Ranch continues this really rapid expansion, could we potentially see things happen a little faster? I think you will. For for phase one, you will. For phase one, and then again, phase phase two, which is, uh, you know, um, is, a, is a separate um, project. Um, I think you'll see that quicker. I, th I think, you know, the, the way it works is, uh, you know, when when uh, developers develop in, in Ontario Ranch, there's a, there's a park fee that they have to pay. So once we start collecting that fee, then the city can go in and, and start buying more land and, and start putting in the amenities. So right now, um, what we want to do is, is get some of the, the framework, um, you know, kind of some of the, uh, the low hanging fruit that we can put in day one, whether it's the amphitheater, whether it's the trails, you know, the, the landscaping, and then maybe a year out, come in and put in some other amenities. But it, it, it is going to take a while, but I think it's going to be quicker than, than, um, than, we, than we anticipate just because you're, you're exactly right, because of the growth and, and our ability to, uh, you know, as more houses are built, more fees are collected, and therefore we can, we can do more with the park. But the, the other part about it also is, is working. You know, we have to work with our um, community life and culture. They just recently um, completed their... Um, their master, um, their master plan for parks, uh, okay. and so uh, there's there's a lot of information there on on needs and and you know you know where services are needed in the city, whether they're recreational, and so forth. And so we're going to be working with them to to really look at um, you know um, what what is going to be needed in in you know in the uh, great park to to suffice certain areas of the city. So um, it, I, I anticipate it's going to go a little bit quicker, but then again, you know. Um, our job right now is we want to get this thing approved and we want to get those construction plans going quickly and hopefully start by the, by the end of the year or the beginning of next year with some construction out there. Just a really quick follow-up question then. So when other phases come in, is that the purpose of the framework then, right? So like um, the presenter said that it's really all one thread that pulls through? Exactly. Yep. Yes, yes. We want, yep. we want to make Perfect. it all connected. Yeah. And that, yeah. that's not that's not to say that there won't be any variety in, in the offerings throughout the park. Yeah. It's just some some things that are consistent enough to make you feel like it's all yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah, I think that that's the key part is that even as you move west, for example, and you have that arroyo, that central spine, and then when we get into the west, there's more mixed use areas where you have commercial, where the park pretty much is gonna, you know cut right through a commercial area where you're going to have park, but you're going to have areas you can sit down and eat and that Arroyo will kind of come through there and well, it'll be also be programmed, but it's, 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 you know, creating that sense of place in certain areas. And that's the, the other part about this park is that it's all, it's a big park. So it's going to have separate kind of districts and areas um, that are going to be, you know, unified by landscaping, by trails, and by this arroyo, but also they're going to have all the, their kind of distinctive areas, which I think is going to be really, really, uh, really neat. Um, and so, you know, we're hopefully, again, we'll, we'll get some of it started quicker, quicker than, we, than we think, but we'll, we'll see. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we have uh, uh, KJ. Hi. How you doing? I'm doing well. Uh, so just a quick question. I, I did ask this in the, in the Q&A, but I uh, just wanted to uh, have a quick follow-up. So is there some space that we would be able to rent out as residents, either a community center or even some uh, shaded areas where we could have events uh, like parties or some family events or things like that? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There will be. Um, and we haven't ironed all that out, but you know, we are going to be working with our community life and culture. There, you know, and uh, when just like any other park in the city, there's going to be areas where you can um, be able to to rent for the day to have gatherings. Um, and uh, and so yeah, for, for, um, that's that's a big part of this park. And and there's also areas as we talked about, you know, when we do these concerts in the park, where we're where you can bring in food truck food trucks, we can bring in vendors. Uh, and so, um, yeah, we, we're going to definitely encourage that. Um, I think we, we want to make sure that the community gets to enjoy the park to its fullest. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Okay, I don't see anybody else. Does anybody else have any questions that they'd like to um, ask or just any general comments or anything? 
Okay. Okay. Well, I'm excited. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let's do this. Let's get this done. Yeah. Yeah, definitely get it done. I, I, you know, we really appreciate your time tonight um, and coming out and, uh, you know, um, watching the presentation. We're, we're really excited. Um, uh, and, you know, um, for us, it's, you know, we've been working really, well, really hard in it with, uh, with SWA and, um, and it's kind of nice to, to kind of, you know, kind of see it evolve to where it's at today. And, um, and I, you know, people keep asking me when I'm out in the, you know, in the city, Hey, what's going on with the great park? And, I try to explain it to them, but it's not until you see the presentation and you understand what's going on that you really start to, to really get excited about it. So, um, you know, we're, we're really excited about it. And it's, you know, it's the community. It's for the entire community. And, and uh, you know, in Ontario here, we want to continue to add continue to add value uh, and also maintain value, meaning that once some of this park is constructed, we need to make sure that we maintain it. We do it in the right way. And we and we continue to improve and we continue to, you know, um, you know, make it, make it better and better. So I appreciate everyone's time. Um, do you have any, any, anything to say, Jamie, or, um, there was one more Sean, question. You, okay. There was one more question in the, in the box. Um, will there be musical performances to inaugurate the, the park? So I think that question might be kind of similar to some of the ones that we've, we've answered about like the concerts and movies in the park. And so, yeah, definitely there are plans um, for, for, for the amphitheater, obviously to, to do that. Um, and, and we are working with our community life and culture on the programming of those types of events, but that is definitely um, a, 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 an intention of, yeah. of that well, yes, yeah. I think when when we do the uh, you know when we open the grand opening, we'll yeah, well, I'm sure there will be we'll have a concert in the park there with probably food trucks, vendors, and and you know a, a whole lot of kind of hoopla because it's it's going to be nice. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yes, it is. Uh, I think so, those are all excellent comments, and uh, I just want to point out that it takes all of us together to make this great park happen. So I'm, I'm, again, I'm excited. Uh, by mostly by you, the, the, you know, the citizens of Ontario and how you, much you are engaged uh, to make this a reality. So thank you, and uh, we'll do this together. Thanks, to everyone. And by next week, uh, we'll, we will have it up on our website. We'll have the presentation. So if you uh, want to share it with anybody, you want to watch it, uh, it'll be up. And uh, our contact information will be on there if you have any questions. Uh, Jamie and I are available. Um, the, um, our contact information is on the screen now. Um, and, uh, you know, if you want to just give us a call or stop by City Hall, um, you're welcome to do so. So with that, I want to thank everybody again tonight for, part for participating and, and listening to this uh, presentation. SWA, thank, thank them for their amazing uh, work and uh, presentation. And with that, I want to wish everybody a happy 4th of July weekend and stay safe. That's right. Thank you, guys. Thank you all. Thank, thank you. Thank you for everybody. Good evening. Thank you.